Hello everyone. Hello, welcome to SRPL Mabuhay. My name is Joseph and I'm a youth librarian for San Francisco Public Library. I'm glad you are here with us to celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Month with the people's poet, Tony Robles, and the most talented illustrator, Carl Angel. This May, we celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islanders everywhere with our program series, AAPI Month. Check out San Francisco Public Library's webpage to see our upcoming events, books by Asian American and Pacific Islander authors and illustrators, exciting book lists, artists, chef, and much more. We would also like to thank the friends of SFPL for their continued support of library programs. Before we begin, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge that as we stand here in San Francisco, California, we are on the unceded land of the Ramatush Ohlone peoples who continue to live, work, thrive, and play here today. So we would like to stand in solidarity with our Asian American community in condemning racism and expression of hate, discrimination, and xenophobia of any kind. Tony Robles, the people's poet, is an award-winning author and a social justice activist. He will read his book, La Casa and the Makibaka Hotel, a celebration of young people's role in the fight for social justice. Lacaz fights for housing rights as his friends and family are forced out of their homes. Lacaz is a beautiful name that means strong in Tagalog. Tony Robles is the author of Cool Don't Live Here No More, A Letter to San Francisco, Fingerprints of a Hunger Strike, Lacaz and the Manila Town Fish, and La Casse and the Makibaka Hotel. Carl Angel is a Filipino American artist who has produced some of the most beautiful illustrations for children's literature, including my favorite, Willie Wins, La Casse and the Manila Town Fish, and La Casse and the Makibaka Hotel. I am very starstruck that I get to introduce my favorite writer and artist who have defined and informed my identity as a Filipino American and as an artist. Without further ado, let's give warm welcome to Tony Robles, who will read his book, La Casa and the Makibaka Hotel. Carl Angel will follow to showcase his creative process to illustrate memorable characters and powerful imagery of social activism for this book. Hi, my name is Tony Robles. I am a uh, Filipino-American author um, coming at you from uh, Western North Carolina. Uh, I am originally from San Francisco. I am the author of this book. It's called La Casa and the Makibaka Hotel. Si La Cas at Ang Makibaka Hotel. And I'm very proud of this book because I was involved in uh, housing advocacy for a long time. And I wanted to portray a child as a community organizer, uh, a child with consciousness, a child with power, a child with respect. And uh, this is what I tried to portray in the book, La Casa and the Makibaka Hotel. And beginning, we begin the story. One fine day, La Casa took a walk. Cars zoomed by. The sky was the color of mangoes. Suddenly, La Casa heard a sound. Tick a boom, tick a boom. A crowd was gathered around a man holding two sticks. His two sticks hit six buckets. The man sang, my name is Tickaboom, 
I played the buckets to pay for my room. The roof was leaking in my hotel room and the rain hit my buckets, tick-a-boom, tick-a-boom. People tossed money into Tick-a-Boom's buckets. Thank you for the music, Mr. Boom, said Lacasse. He gave a penny and went on his way. Lacasse walked on until suddenly he heard another noise. Tap, tap, tap. A crowd of people was gathered around a man tap dancing faster and faster. Smoke rose from his shoes and sparks flew from his heels. I am Firefoot, said the man. I tap for a cent so I can pay my rent. There are mice in my hotel room. Don't want to step on them so my feet better move fast. Firefoot took off his shoe and passed it around. Lacasse placed a penny into the smoking shoe and walked on down the street. Soon Lacasse came upon a strange looking man. He sat alone, fast asleep and snoring. <sighs> Hi, said Lacasse, who are you? The man woke suddenly and almost fell from his chair. My name is Fernando, the karaoke king. Give me a dollar and I will sing. Lacasse searched his pockets, but all he found were two adobo peanuts and his lucky nickel. Fernando frowned. Is that all you have? Hmm. You are like a bird, little boy. Cheap, cheap, cheap. It'll take more than that for me to sing. And with that, the karaoke king turned and walked away towards the Makibaka Hotel. Lacasse decided to follow him. In the lobby of the Makibaka Hotel, Lacasse looked around. He recognized the people inside. He saw the owner of the Philippine grocery store and the man who cut hair at the barbershop. He saw the man who swept the street and the woman who made popcorn at the movie theater. Excuse me, do you know the karaoke king, Lacasse asked, one of the manongs sitting in the lobby. The karaoke king lives upstairs, the man said, pointing to a flight of squeaky stairs. Upstairs, Lacasse came to an open door. He looked inside the small room. Fernando was leaning over the sink dyeing his hair. A pot of rice boiled wildly on the stove. Fernando looked up from the sink. Oh, it is the adobo peanut boy. Are you hungry? Do you want a plate of fish and rice? Have some. Eat now. Thank you, said Lacasse. Can you teach me to sing karaoke? He asked. Sure, said Fernando. Come back tomorrow. Maybe you can be a karaoke king too. The next day, Lacasse ran through the rain to the Makibaka Hotel. The lobby was crowded, even though water dripped from the ceiling. A sign on the wall read, karaoke party today. Are you going to sing? Firefoot asked Lacasse. Suddenly, Fernando appeared from behind. The stars on his jumpsuit sparkled. The karaoke king approached the microphone as the music started. For you, I will sing a song of love, he crooned. But before he could begin, a voice boomed loud. What are you doing? It was Peachy, the building manager. Lacasse looked up to, at her and said, we're having a karaoke party. Don't you want to sing? Peachy frowned. Her face looked like a tomato. No singing, no parties in the lobby. Karaoke time is over. She snatched the karaoke machine and clomped up the stairs. Clomp, 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 clomp. Why is she in such a bad mood, asked Lacasse. Because the landlord is selling the building and we have 30 days to leave, Tickaboom said as he began to cry into his buckets. 
Firefoot stomped his feet. The karaoke king covered his face with his cape. The party was most definitely over. A week later, Lacasse sat on the steps of the Makibaka Hotel. People had begun to pack and some were leaving. Soon a man approached the steps. His suit was crisp and his shoes shined like stars. Lacasse squinted up at him. Do you live here? Lacasse asked. Does your mother live here? The man laughed. No, no, no. My mother does not live here. The man frowned up at the Makibaka Hotel. I am the landlord. This building belongs to me. My friends live here, and they don't want to leave. Won't you let them stay, please? asked Lacasse. They will find other places to live, the man said impatiently. Lacasse thought about Firefoot, Tickaboom, and the Karaoke King. He suddenly had an idea. Here, Mr. Landlord, this is my lucky nickel, Lacasse said, pulling his lucky nickel from his pocket and handing it to the man. Let's flip for it. Heads, my friends can stay. Tails, they have to leave. The man's eyes opened wide. This is not a game, little boy, said the man. He put Lacasse's lucky nickel in his pocket and turned to go. Lacasse walked upstairs and knocked on Fernando's open door. His new friends were packing their suitcases. Anger suddenly jumped inside Lacasse. I don't want you to leave. We'll go to the landlord's house tomorrow and tell him you want to stay. Fernando sighed. Lacasse, this has happened before. We tried to fight, but we had to move anyway. Lacasse's eyes flashed, but this is your home. We have to try. Tickaboom and Firefoot and Fernando stopped packing. You're right, they said. Let's do it. The following morning, Lacasse, Tickaboom, and Firefoot painted signs in Fernando's little room. The signs read, we won't go and no evictions and Maki baka huag matakot, which means struggle, don't be afraid. You know, Lacasse said as he painted, maybe if the landlord lets you stay, he can fix the leaks in the ceiling and get rid of the mice. Firefoot and Tickaboom nodded. And maybe we can have karaoke parties in the lobby again, said Fernando. Downstairs, everyone at the hotel was ready to march. They crammed the lobby. They held their signs. Suddenly, Peachy appeared at the top of the stairs with the karaoke machine. I'm sorry I was so mean the other day. I don't want to have to leave either. Here, bring this to the march, she said, as she handed it to Lacasse. The people cheered. Fernando looked at Lacasse. I was afraid before, but not now. We are together, no matter what happens. In this way, we have already won. Time to go to the landlord's house, cried Lacasse. Tickaboom hit his buckets as everybody marched into the street. They chanted and stomped their feet. It was like a party. People stopped and stared and then joined them as they marched. Fernando and Lacasse sang into the karaoke machine. They call us the karaoke kings. We believe in what we sing. We won't leave, we won't go. Maki baka huagma takot. Maki baka huagma takot. Meanwhile, the landlord sat at his desk, nervously tossing Lacasse's lucky nickel in the air. Each time the nickel dropped into his hand, it landed the same way. Heads, heads, heads. The landlord heard the people chanting as they gathered in front of his house. No, no, we won't go. The landlord looked out the window at the crowd outside. He remembered what Lacasse had said to him. Heads, they can stay. Tails, 
they have to move. And he tossed Lacasa's lucky nickel into the air. It fell into his palm, heads up. And that's the end of our story. Again, La Casa and the Maki Baka Hotel. It is um, published by Lee and Lowe Publishers, multicultural publishers based in New York. Um, and this uh, story is to show that children have the power to know right from wrong. They have the power to make decisions. Um, they have power to, uh, to know right from wrong and to be involved with their, their community and to respect their community and to respect their elders. And the uh, book was a labor of love. The uh, illustrator was Carl Angel, who is a, a brilliant artist who has done artwork illustrations for many other children's books. So um, thank you very much for uh, letting me read this story and to share it with you. And um, again, if, if you're interested in, in getting the book, you can go to Lee and Low. That's L-E-E -E and L-O-W, Lee and Low. Uh, East Wind Books of Berkeley also carries it, as well as Archipelago Filipino Books, uh, located on 6th and Mission in San Francisco. Again, the collages, uh, the buildings and stuff with, uh, with members of the community, um, Tony and I felt was a real important um, aspect of the past books in terms of having them, uh, of honoring them uh, through the stories um, and just sort of uh, always remembering where you come from. Uh, Tony's stories are always about community and, uh, and heart and, um, and about how we how we treat one another and how um, important it is that, uh, to, to always uh, remain a community uh, throughout all kinds of change and, um, and to just, you know, uh, to honor those bonds that we all have um, within each other because it's so easy to forget um, as one gets older or as one is related to who, you know, who came before you, who paved that way for you. Um, and so Tony is able to communicate that in the story, which isn't really didactic. It's, it's always fun, it's always humorous. Yeah, and so emblematic of his voice. He's really, he's really good at that. So my job was to try to see if I can uh, rise up that level of uh, storytelling visually. Is, uh, I'll just start, this is actually just the fun part of it. Uh, well, not the fun, the whole process is fun, but um, what's really uh, a little more um, unrestrained and uh, is the first part of it when you're just trying to come up with ideas. That's the, the discovery phase of it um, is for me, uh, one of the more enjoyable parts of the process. Um, and so in uh, Makibaka Hotel, um, there are a number of characters that Lacasse meets. Um, one is Fernando the Karaoke King. And so, um, yeah, so let's see. Show up. But, um, you know, you just, uh, you just start uh, kind of messing around and trying to figure out um, uh, what, how, how best to embody the, um, the words of the author, you know, visually. Um, this one is, uh, originally this was the first, uh, um, draft of Firefoot. Um, I don't know why, I think I had him as, like, the kind of filming for Mance or so, I mean, which isn't what he is or was in, in the book, but, um, it's one of those things with ideas are just popping out of your head and just trying to uh, take it where it goes. Um, and <clears throat> this is, a uh, Tickaboom, um, and um, this was kind of based on a uh, um, character, on, on an actual character that uh, Tony had had known. Um, 
in in downtown, I think it was Union Square, uh, where we would play the drums and the buckets. And um, for a few of these, um, Tony had provided me with some pictures. I think for Firefoot, um, he had uh, he had given me some reference of that, and, um, and so I used that ultimately. But I think I come up with the, my my uh, rendition of it before he gave me those photos. So once he gave me that. I try to incorporate whatever the whatever ideas the author has in mind, um, but uh, you know just to honor um, whatever vision the author has. This is a collaboration, so it's not so much me just taking the words and completely excluding the writer out of the process. I would just include um, whatever um, vision the writer has, but on my end, I have to interpret it. So um, um, some ideas for the landlord. Um, my idea was for him to have a jacket made out of dollar bills. Uh, not so much out of actual dollar bills, but just the pattern of his jacket and the suit to be like that. And to kind of have him be mysterious, you know, not to have him have a face, uh, which gave it more of a sinister um, type of look. Uh, and also, you know, I thought I thought that would add uh, to Tony's. Tony's words to, to the depiction of the characters when he was presenting the manuscript. Thank you, Tony and Carl, for the powerful message of unity, love, and laughter. Uh, I just love the story of Lacasse and the progress from Lacasse in the Manila Town Fish to Lacasse as a social justice hero. We are very grateful to Tony Robles and Carl Angel. SF State, the Association of Chinese Teachers, Square and Circle Club for today's program. And thank you students, teachers, readers, and listeners for tuning in with us to celebrate Asian Americans and Pacific Islander Month. Remember, you can find Tony Robles' powerful writing and Carl Angel's beautiful artwork through SFPL to go. You can find out Asian Americans who have fought for social justice in judicial system with APIA biography.sfsu.edu. If you love today's program, check out our calendar for more AAPI programs in our virtual library. And that's it. That's it for today, folks. Take good care of yourself and stay safe. And we hope to see you back at the SF. PL Virtual Library soon. Bye, friends.